The title of my message this morning is The Fundamentals of a Pentecostal Church. I'm not going to bring you anything new today. I'm going to bring you the same old gospel truth that's in this book. I had the privilege of going to Uruguay about 13 years ago. I was there about nine days. And after about four days, I, I, I was in the suitcase. I, I would take my clothes out every day. And, and I found in the suitcase a card from Karen, so very much my wife. Despised by you know, after about five or six days, you're getting a little lonely. I open that card up, and boy, was it cool. I mean, it was great stuff. I'm like, oh, man, I got a little sniff, sniff going on in my pillow. The next day, I got a chance to call her up, and I said, I said, honey, I said, thank you so much for that card. Man, that just really picked me up. It was some really good stuff. Oh, wow. I just love you, baby. Left the glory that he had above. Well, I went home. Eight years later, I went to Uruguay again. Dark. After I was there about four days or so, I'm going through the suitcase. I found another card. Isn't it great? I got, I got another card. I read it. That one was better than the first. And I was like, wow, this is great. And so I called her up the next day. I said, man, honey, I said, I said, I got that car, honey. I said, I double sniffed on my pillow this time. And she said to me, what card? I said, that card you put in my suitcase. She says, I put that in there eight years ago. You never took it out. But the words were just as fresh. I said the words were just as fresh as if they were written the same day. You know why? That's love, L-U-V. That's love. You see, we have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And these words never get old. They're as new and as fresh as they were the day that the Holy Ghost penned them. And I give God the glory for His word will never return void. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Turn with me to Acts chapter 3. I've experienced in many years of ministry a slackening of the fundamentals with the results that we have now become more concerned with image. How do I look? What does the community think? I want to say I will not come down to the level of the world to win the world. I must stay firm in my belief. Stand still and see God work as you stand still in the word of God and let it be your rule of faith and conduct. I had to go to the hospital one time. Went to the hospital and they gave me a gown. There's no accessories on the gown. It was open in the back with strings. I thought, I want to wear this. I've got visitors coming in here. Here's the preacher. He's laying in the bed. He's got a hospital gown on. I want to tell you something. Those things don't look all that great. How many know what I'm saying? But how come they give them to you? You know why? Because they want to laugh at you. No, it's because they're concerned not with how you look. I said they're concerned not with how you appear, not with your image, not whether your hair is combed. They are concerned with your vital signs. They're concerned with keeping you alive. I got to tell you, folks, it's time for the church to get back to our vital signs. When it's life or death, my friend, they want to be able to get at you and save your life. Friend, I want to tell you, we've been low on the blood lately. Our oxygen level is low. The spiritual oxygen level is down. Our respiration is in a danger zone. However, we look good. Oh God, I pray that you would bring us back to the fundamentals. Even a basketball coach renews the fundamentals with his team so they can remember where they came from and how they got to be who they are. So fundamental number one is prayer. Peter and John went to what? Went to pray. On their way to prayer, this happens. I said, on their way to prayer, this lame man gets healed. I want to tell you, look what can happen when we just make our way to a prayer meeting. Oh, friends, if something like this can happen on our way to prayer, what can happen on our way out of prayer? I just want to tell you, it's time to pray. It's time to get back to the fundamental. Throw out the accessory and start getting on our knees and praying. As one old preacher said, we've talked so much about prayer. We think we pray. We've talked so much about Pentecost. We think we are. We've talked so much about giving. We think we gave. God is after men and women who will spend time with him in the secret place. 
so they can have something to say in the public place. Through prayer, people come to Christ. Through prayer, the sick are healed. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. Through prayer, Job's captivity is turned around when he prayed for his friends. Through prayer, the inner man is strengthened by the Holy Ghost. Through prayer, people are baptized in the Holy Ghost with the initial physical evidence of speaking in other tongues. How do you know? Oh, you know how I know? Because it's happened. About a year and a half ago, 2018, six teenagers came up to the altar on a Sunday night. I'm here to tell you, those six kids came up to that altar. We laid hands on them, and they received the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. But that wasn't the first time it happened. It happened in 1971 when I was 12 years old at Big Prairie Camp. No, but that wasn't the first time it's ever happened. It happened in 1906 at 214 Bonnie Bray Street under the direction of W.J. Seymour. That wasn't the first time it happened. It happened in 1903 in Galena, Kansas. A lady by the name of Mary Arthur was baptized in the Holy Ghost and healed. And she spoke with other tongues. But that wasn't the first time it happened. It happened in 1901. A lady by the name of a young college student by the name of Agnes Osmond. She was in Topeka, Kansas at the Bible school of Charles Parham. And she, on New Year's Day, said, would you all lay hands on me? I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And she was baptized in the Holy Ghost and spoke in tongues for three days. But that wasn't the first time it happened. It happened in 1899. A pastor by the name of C.M. Hansen, he said these words. He said, the Lord led me to get alone with him. And he says, and all of a sudden, a mighty rushing wind got a hold of me and the Holy Ghost filled my temple and he says and I spoke with other tongues as the Spirit gave me utterance and I became an instrument in the hand of the Almighty oh glory but that wasn't the first time it happened it happened in 1890 a man by the name of Daniel Alry in Delaware Ohio was baptized in the Holy Ghost as a result of a prayer meeting and he spoke with other tongues glory to God but that wasn't the first time it happened it happened in 1879 a man by the name of Jethro Walthall, a Baptist minister of all things. Isn't that wonderful? He, he said this. He said, I was filled with the Holy Ghost and spoke in tongues, not knowing anything of the biblical doctrine of the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. But that wasn't the first time it happened. It happened in 1873 when D.L. Moody went over to England. Him and Ira Sankey, they spoke at the YMCA. A, a, a witness, an eyewitness by the name of Robert Boyd was there. And he said this, when I walked into the meeting, he said it was on fire. He says the young men were speaking in tongues and prophesying. And at the end of that meeting, they went out into that city. And they won so many people to cry God in that city that it was said that they turned it upside down. And God stormed the place for his grace and his glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. But that wasn't the first time it happened. It happened in 1830. Uh, uh, two, two, two brothers, Scottish brothers, James and George McDonald, in a prayer meeting. In a prayer meeting. You said they were praying? Yes, they were praying. They weren't playing Mr. Potato Head, you know. They were, they were seeking God. He filled them with the Holy Ghost and they began to speak with other tongues. But that wasn't the first time it happened. It happened in 1750. A man by the name of Thomas Walsh, an associate of John Wesley. That wasn't the first time it happened. In the fourth century, Augustine said these words. He says, we still do what the apostles did in the New Testament when they laid hands on the Samaritans and called down the Holy Ghost. It is expected, he said, that new converts should speak with new tongues. Oh, that wasn't the first time it happened. It happened in Acts chapter 19 when Paul laid hands on the Ephesians and it says they all spoke with tongues and prophesied. Oh, but that wasn't the first time it happened. It happened in Acts chapter 10 verse 46. And while Peter was yet speaking, the Holy Ghost came down and he says, we know it. He said, we know it. He says, because we heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Oh, but that wasn't the first time it happened. It happened in Acts chapter 4, verse 30 and 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and spoke the word of God with boldness. Oh, but that wasn't the first time it happened. In Acts chapter 2. They were all with one accord in one place. Acts chapter 1 says they were in prayer and supplication. C.H. Spurgeon, you all heard of him. He was looking for a piece of property to buy. Brother Schmidgall related the story. 
looking for a piece of property to put his church on. He found one. Went to the realtor's office. The realtor said, that's 20,000 pounds. And he said, I'm going to offer 2,000 pounds. He said, that's ridiculous. Owner will never go for that. Well, nevertheless, let him know I'm offering him 2,000. And the owner came back the next day to the realtor. He said, have you had any bites on my property? And the guy said, nah, haven't had any. He said, none? I can't believe we haven't had any. He said, well, he says, we've had one. One? Yeah. He said, who was it? He said, oh, some preacher guy. Some preacher guy? He said, yeah. He said, what was his name? He said, his name was, was Spurgeon. Spurgeon? He says, I know that man. He said, you sell that property to him for 2,000 pounds. He said, why? Because if you don't, he'll pray till he gets it for free. And he says, and that's what I don't want. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, may we never underestimate the power of prayer. He'll pray until he gets it for free. Oh, friends, may we be known in the community. May we be known in the community, not for our accessories, but for our necessities, which make us radical Christians for the glory of Almighty God. Oh, somebody shout glory. Somebody say amen. We serve a mighty God. Oh, hallelujah. So keep on praying, keep on believing, for God is still on the throne. If we spent more time in the secret place, we'd see more lame people healed in the marketplace. Fundamental number two, preaching. Oh, friends, hear me now today. We have a message to preach to the lame people who are lost and dying and going to hell without Jesus. And where are they? They're sitting at the gates of religion. But it says that Peter said, look on us. And he looked at them and noticed he was expecting to receive what he always received. And that was silver and gold. Just enough to keep him another day. I call that a felt need. The church is full. Religion is full of people who are going around, sitting at the gates, waiting for something to throw at them that will help keep them just for another day to help them feel good. Come and hear our pastor. He has a relevant message for relevant people and relevant times. My wife and I were driving up Route 25 from Bowling Green to Perrysburg. There was a great big billboard. On the billboard, I had a picture of a lady in curlers, 1970s style. She had a house coat on. A big frying pan in her hand from the billboard. And the slogan said, Come to this church. This church is not your mother's church. My wife and I saw it. I said, Boy, that ticks me off. You know why that ticks me off? Because I came out of my mother's church. Did you hear what I said? I came out of, you know what I did? I preached a message about two weeks later on. This is your mother's church. Because at my mother's church, they preach the blood. At my mother's church, they preach the cross. At my mother's church, they preach divine healing. At my mother's church, they preach the baptism in the Holy Ghost. At my mother's church, they preach the second coming. So friends, I tell you this, I like my mother's church. I want to go back to my mother's church because that's where I got filled with the Holy Ghost. That's where I got called into the ministry. That's where God kept me and made me who I am even though, I'm a, even though I don't look like much. But friends, my blood pressure is up. Hallelujah. This man had a cup. He was wanting someone to give him something he was expecting. He was expecting to be given something relevant, something that was germane to his issue at hand, which was a coin in a cup to keep him for another day. Well, I want to tell you something, folks. The issue at hand is not silver and gold. I said the issue at hand is not silver and gold. The issue at hand is this. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's the issue at hand. The issue at hand is this. The issue at hand is this. If you would be free from your burden of sin, there's power in the blood of the Lamb. Would you or evil a victory win? There's power in the precious blood of the Lamb. The issue at hand is this, friend. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And sinners plunge beneath that flood. Lose. 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 Not only am I radical, I'm a loser. Glory to God. Did you hear what I said? I'm not only radical, Brother Tomlin. I am a loser. I lost my sin. I lost my stain. I lost my shame. 
I lost my guilt. I don't have any more sadness. I don't have any more sorrow. And I lost a Christless grave. And I gained eternal life through Jesus Christ, my Lord. Oh, somebody say amen. Oh, glory to God. This is preaching out of the Word. This is allowing the Word of God to speak for itself. I'm talking about one of the fundamentals of a Pentecostal church is the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But I want you to know one thing about this. Peter said, I don't have silver and gold, but what I have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. He was used by the Holy Ghost. Peter was used by the Holy Ghost. He did not use the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost used Peter. I want you to know that. He didn't use the Spirit. The Spirit used him. The fundamental of Pentecostalism is not just prayer, preaching, and power gifts. But it is this, perspective. Always know this. We didn't do it. Who we got preachers going around saying, well, I, I know. I didn't do it. Pastor, when you said that, I was just amazing. I know. I know it wasn't you. I want you to know something right now. I didn't do a thing. I'm just an instrument in His hand. I'm just a vessel of God. My Bible says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify who? You? No! God! Glorify God! Do you know what that means? That means to me that we must do good works so much so that when we do them, they draw attention to the Father and not to us. They must be done in such a way that the finger is pointed in his direction and not in your direction. In all things, Jesus must have the preeminence. And lastly, power. Lastly, purpose. Purpose. Repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Guess what, Pentecostals? If we pray but we don't say repent and be converted, we've lost our purpose. We can preach till we're blue in the face. We can have the gifts of power. But if we don't say repent and be converted, we've lost our purpose. But what ever happened at these funerals that preachers preach? Have you ever been to a funeral? An evangelical preacher, even a Pentecostal one? They preach the message, whatever they're preaching. You know, he was a good guy. He was this, that, and other thing, this, that, and other thing. Oh, how and all that. But when you get to the end, there ain't nothing there. I don't hear any gospel. I don't hear any repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come with the presence of the Lord. I don't hear any of that. I don't hear them. I want you to know, friends, at funerals, I preach, you must be born again. There is a heaven and there is a hell. That's my purpose here. My purpose here is to let you know that God is still saving men and women, boys and girls. Oh, I've preached funerals where I've done that. People have gotten saved. I preached one funeral, 12 people gave their hearts to Christ. I preached another funeral, 15 gave their hearts to Christ. I preached another funeral, 21 gave their hearts to Jesus Christ. I preached a funeral in a Catholic church. The priest was right behind me. I had the whole service and he was there behind me. I preached in this great big Catholic cathedral. It was packed to the gills. And I preached, you must be born again. I preached that you can't get saved by sliding the bead. You can't get saved by praying to Mary. But you must get saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. And 12 people responded in that Catholic church and gave their hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ. And the priest walked out behind me and he looked at me and he said, that was good. I said, glory to God. Oh, but it isn't always good sometimes, is it? Oh, I preached the gospel at a funeral. Fifteen people gave their hearts to Christ. And one of the family members of the deceased wrote me an email and said, you should never have done that. You were the buzzard and we were the roadkill. Exactly what he told me. I, I wrote him back and said, well, thank you. I'm sorry you feel that way, but I'll be praying with you. But there was an 80-year-old man at that funeral, dressed like this, came up to me, 80-year-old man, tears in his eyes, shook my hand. He said, Pastor, I'm 80 years old. You can tell I've been to a lot of funerals, but I've never been to one where I've heard it put so straight to my eyes. And friends, I just want to, he said, I just want to thank you with tears in his eyes. He thanked me and shook my hand. He says, I have heard the gospel. You see, I don't care so much about whether my shoes match my purse anymore. What I care about is this, repent and be converted. You can ostracize me. 
you cannot invite me back. I don't have to speak at the ministerial association anymore if you don't want me to. You can ostracize me like I said. You can kick me out. You can even shoot me. My friends, I want you to know I got to be prepared for that. I want you to know with what we've been seeing in Texas and other areas, we've got to be prepared for that. I said we've got to be prepared for that. I want to make a statement right now. I am not afraid to die for the cause of God. I am not afraid to die. I am not afraid to die. I don't want to be riddled with bullets, but I do know this. If it does happen, it only hurts for a minute because then I'm in the presence of the Almighty God. Friends, it is time to not forget our purpose. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to keep preaching it. I'm going to keep it up. Just like Paul said. Paul said this. He said this. He said, all men forsook me. All men forsook me, but the Lord stood by me and strengthened me, and he delivered me from every evil work. You don't have to know the answer. You've got the one who is the answer living inside of you, and you don't have to worry about it because God is standing beside you, and he will never leave you nor forsake you. Can I get a witness in the house? Glory to God Almighty. You don't need to know. He is the answer. And he'll let you know what you need to know. Oh, praise be to God. Can you stand with me and shout praise to my Lord? Shout praise to my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of you have felt like you've been ostracized. You've been left out. But I want you to know, come to this altar right this minute and let God know you're going to keep your hand up. Did you hear me? Let's come up and say, I keep my hand up. Can you come? Would you come? Would you come? Would you come? Kids, would you come? Kids, would you come? Teenagers, would you come? Would you just come and lift your hands and praise Him with me? Come and lift your hands and praise Him with me. Come and lift your hands. How many would renew a commitment?